Hey guys, everyone good? Well, normally you get that after lunch. Right, thank you. Um, I would like to be nervous, but the issue is I'm talking about mental resilience, so I lost the right to be nervous. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, would, uh, I, I got uh, excited with this question raised by uh, TEDxUM, uh, which goes by what makes us human. So I thought as a speaker, I'll take a little bit of my share to answer this question, which I believe the answer would be simply our choice to be a human. All right? Because today, it's rather a choice whether you still want to be a human or not. You don't trust me? Just go through the papers today. All right? You can see whether people are being human or not. So it's your choice to be human. All right? Okay, uh, so I've got a little bit of unpleasant news and also at the same time I have some pleasant news. So uh, I'll give you both so you can decide. But before I start, I would like to ask you the simple question by Abraham Lincoln. Right? So how many legs does a dog have if you call his tail a leg? What do you think? All right, keep guessing. All right? I'll give you the answer at the end of my speech. Right? It's just for you to keep looking at me, right? Right, so the unpleasant news is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have got uh, suicides rising day by day, right? Ten years ago, we hardly hear any suicide news, but today, almost all the time, we do hear of suicides, especially right now, it's a suicide season where you get uh, SPM results are out, so everybody's in fear that something might happen, right? So even in Malaysia, suicide is rising. On the world aspect, there's a suicide happening every 40 uh, seconds and those who are involved are in the age group of 15 to 29 I believe that comprises all of us here including me I think so I fit myself in that all right so suicide is on the rise what else is on the rise we've got many more things on the rise we have got mental health issue depression is on the rise we have got uh, divorce on the rise everything is rising up right so this is the unpleasant news I have for you which is a reality so, what do we do about this? Right? How could we deal with this? So, that's where I thought of, uh, as an idea worth sharing, we should work on mental resilience. Right? It's, it's kind of jargon term, but mental resilience is simply how to make your mind stronger. Right? Mentally, how to be stronger. Right? Um, it's basically the ability to adapt to life's difficult situations. Right? Difficult situation comes in finance, family, whatever it is. Right? So, how do we basically build up our mental resilience? Number one, you have to have self-awareness. If I were to ask any, all of you, who are you? I believe about 99% is going to say your name, right? Well, I am Suren. Yeah, correct. That's your name, which even you didn't choose. It was given to you, right? So is that how much we know about ourselves? Okay, with the challenging situation right now, you should know yourself even better. What makes you happy? What makes you sad? What makes you angry? What makes you agitated? What makes you feel good? What makes you forget to eat? You know? So all these kind of things, when you know about yourself, half the battle is won. You don't get into trouble because you know that it's, that's not going to excite you. Right? So self-awareness, ladies and gentlemen. Number two is all about thinking positive. But this is rather cliche. Everyone tells you to think positive. Yeah, right. Until we have studies that showing that thinking positive could also be a fallacy. Right, but then there is a twist to it. Right? So at the same time, you should couple thinking uh, positive with thinking rational. Right? So how do you think positive? Right? Let me give you a scenario. If you lose a key, you lost a key, how do you look at it positively? Well, positively, you're going to get a new set of keys. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? And the other side of it, you're going you're gonna to be more careful not to lose things after this. But it's not just that. That is very surface. So how do you avoid uh, thinking negative? I'll give you a trick. Negativity comes into your mind in the form of questions. All right? Say you lose your key or something happened to you. You failed an exam. Questions come in. Why did that happen? All right? So how do you identify this? Is that if you could answer that question in a jiffy, right immediately, because I didn't do well, because I didn't work hard enough, you just ward it off. So it doesn't turn into negativity. But then the trick is, when you linger with this question, well, I, it always happens to me. I am rather unlucky. And you know, things go on and on. That is where negativity 
eats you up, right? It sucks up all your energy, right? So whenever there's a question in your mind, try to answer it right spot on, without delay. When you delay, negativity comes in. Because as humans, we, are, we, we tend to have a lot of negativity with us. If I were to ask you to take out a piece of paper and list 10 things good about you, you can, you can definitely start off with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what else? Huh? Then you tend to ask around, what do you think? Huh? But if I say, list down 10 bad things about you, you might be asking extra papers. Yes, that is it's nothing wrong with you. That is how we are. You know? We tend to think negative. Now, thinking rational is, is a way that you think with logic, right? In a way that you think you put in a responsibility into it, accountability into it. <coughs> so what do you say when you lose that key? Do you say the key got lost? Or do you say I lost the key? Key got lost? I lost. You say I lost the key. That is very rational because you are taking the accountability of losing the key. That's a rational answer there. You see? So that's the trick. So don't go on saying the key got lost. The key never had legs to just walk away. Right? Yes. Next, we stick to reality. Uh, this is something I would really like to emphasize on. Right? Life is getting virtual every day by day. We are getting virtual day by day. We, I believe all of you will have more than 1,500, 2,000 friends online. Right? On your social medias. We hardly look up in LRT and uh, train stations. We, we hardly look up. Everybody is always down. Right? But what happens when your battery goes out and you don't have a power bank? The last time I asked that question, what happens when your battery goes out? Somebody said, I got power bank. Right? Okay, you don't have a power bank. Only then, we tend to look up and realize, where am I? Oh, I'm in tent. <laughs> and you realize somebody is there with you having a meal. Right? So you have to recall yourself that. Uh, just like a tree. I like to use this tree. Right? The branches may go reach out to the skies, but the root is always on the ground. So your reality is who is with you physically, right? So not everything is virtual. And life is not as easy as it sounds, right? Next, uh, this is a crucial part. We have to manage our emotion, right? I believe some of the speakers also touched on this. How do we manage emotion? Right? How do, who decides what do you feel? Who decides you feel happy? Who decides you feel angry? Who decides you feel bogged down? Who decides? That's what we say, on myself. But is that what we are doing? Come in the earth, you come early in the morning, coffee is bad, you get angry the whole day. Right? You say good morning to someone, they just ignore you and then you get fussed up the whole day. Right? So it's just like you are creating a remote to your emotions, making copies of it and just giving it to everyone. Your friends, your neighbors, cat, dogs, you know. You want to enjoy a real good meal in a shop, but then when you see a cat, you don't like the cat, you start to feel irritated, you lost your enjoyment of the food. So the cat just pressed on the remote. Be frustrated. frustrated. And you were like, yeah, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. Take the remote back to you. Take the remote back to you. You decide what really you want to feel. When I was a kid, I'll recall this story. When I was a kid, I was uh, forced to walk to a shop which is really, really far. So it's really tiring to walk so far. So I, initially I would feel so bad, oh please, why me and stuff, right? But then I picked up on this thing that, there's this thing that I would do every time I need to go to the shop. I'll choose a small pebble and I'll kick that pebble right up to the shop. And when I purchase my stuff, on the way back, I'll kick the pebble, pebble back. So what happened, instead of focusing on how far the shop is and it's tiring, it's hot, my aim was to bring the pebble to the shop and bring it back. You get what I mean? So instead of being uh, bogged down, I was I was having this challenger spirit. Can I do it? Right. So you just shift your emotion. right? That's one thing that you can do. And the next thing is you have to expect less. Right? If anyone were to come up to you and say, don't expect anything in life, you get disappointed. That is a fallacy, my friends. Right? You, you can't really run away from expecting and you can't really run away from people expecting something from you, right? You really can't, can't do that away. So, all you can do is that keep your expectation less and in a controllable way, one. Number two, always pair your expectation with the package of when you expect, part and parcel of life is disappointment. So, be ready to be disappointed. It's okay. 
It happens every now and then. What happens when you say you don't want to get disappointed but at the same time you have expectation? It's not going to work. It's going to bog you down. Right? So expect less. And this, I would really, really like to emphasize to all of you that effort and perseverance is something that you have to really, really hold on. Because we are now into, we are facing this illusion of convenience. Yes, I agree, life is more convenient now, right? You can buy things online, you can do everything online. Your parents were uh, searching for a job through classifieds, newspapers and walking around. And you are now searching for jobs on portals and stuff. But the point is, both people still search. You get what I mean? It doesn't mean when it's convenient, it's easier. Life is not easier. There's, there's still effort needed. Right? So if you are into a relationship, you need to put in the effort. If you are into a job, you have to put in the effort. If you are into studying, you have to put in the effort. It's not, don't be carried away that everything is convenient. I want it to happen. One story to share with you on uh, relationship. There was this, uh, very quick one. There was this uh, elderly woman purchasing some stuff. So she is noticing this uh, cashier, very young lady, who has got teary eyes. So this elderly woman asked her, what happened? You look sad. So this cashier said, well, uh, I'm into my divorce. I'm sad. So the cashier asked the elderly lady, uh, you seem happy. How long are you married? She said, I'm married for 35 years. And she was surprised. She said, how do you do that? And the elderly, elderly lady very beautifully said, it's simple there. I was born in the times where something goes wrong, I fix it. You were born in the time where something goes wrong, you change it. Effort. You get what I mean? You get what I mean? You have to have effort in your relationship with someone. Whatever you do, everything is effort. Right, so after all this, you still have to know what is the damage that will happen if you are unable to cope up with the complexity of life. You have to understand what is the risk that you are facing. Like I initially said, depression, mental health, suicidal thoughts, ideations and stuff. You have to know all this. Right? Don't just get caught up like, yeah, it's happening, but uh, I won't be fitting into that uh, statistic. It won't happen to me. No, it might happen to you. It might happen to me. So when you know what is the damage, then you will be more uh, alert. Right? And once you know the damage, the next thing that you need to do is that you will definitely need to channel out. Right? You need to channel out to someone. Talk to someone. If you're facing some situation, share it with somebody. Somebody trustworthy. Right? You can talk to your friends, your family. Just to don't treat your heart and soul like a garbage bin where you put every bad things inside. There. Let's make it a treasure box. Put in nice stuff inside. There. Right? So talk to someone. Someone that will encourage you. Someone that will motivate you. If you feel it's good to talk to that tall, brown, handsome counselor on the stage, grab him after the talk. Go and look for him. Right? Just talk to him. Uh, who's that? <laughs> right? Next, uh, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to a strength. Find something. There is always something to hold on. There's always something to look up to. Right? So find what is your strength. Maybe an idol. Maybe uh, an inspiration. Maybe TED Talks can help you. Right? Maybe your religion. Whatever it is, find something to hold on. You have to hold on at the, the difficult times that you face. Right? So now, uh, when, you have, when, when you are able to practice all these things that I just shared, right? I'm not assuring you, I'm not telling you that when you practice all this, you're not going to face problems. No. I'm just telling you how to face them. You will be facing more problems. You will be facing more challenges. You will be facing difficult times. So when you have all this in you, you practice it. You'll be more motivated, right? You'll be able to face rejections, failures. You'll be stronger, right? To cope with stress. And you'll be able to take things lightly. It's not so serious after all. Right? You'll be more mindful. And overall, you'll be mentally healthy. And overall, in the whole stuff, when you're mentally resilient, you'll have a meaningful life, right? So this is what I'm talking about. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can never avoid people out there who are waiting to count how many times that you're going to fall. They are ready to wait, to count. But all that you need to do is that you must always be ready to count how many times you rise up again, even if you fall. Right? So the take-home message from me is that the change for the better begins not only on the stage, 
or down the stage, it begins from you and me. People in this hall, when you when you start to be resilient, eventually, like 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 a, like one of the speakers said, it's a ripple effect. Let's say all of us start to be more resilient when we are done with this that talk. Okay, the nation will be even more resilient. Okay, and we could bring down the statistics of suicide, depression, and stuff. Okay. So coming back to my question, any guesses? Oh, you forgot the question. How many legs does a dog have if you call the tail a leg? Five. Five. Right. Okay. The answer is still four. Why? Because calling the tail a leg doesn't make it a leg. Same goes with you. You might be saying, no, I'm strong, I'm mentally good, I'm strong, I'm resilient. It doesn't make you resilient. Just look back. Just look back. Are you really, really mentally strong? And on mental resilience, ask yourself where I stand. Right? So I believe that's an idea worth sharing. Thank you.